أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون صدق الله صدق الله العظيم My dear brethren My dear brethren and sisters This comes like an anti-climax to what we have been hearing the voice from heaven. We hear Allah's kalam so beautifully read and now comes along somebody like me wanting to speak and give some comments on some Quranic verses. To me, I feel, you feel ashamed to stand up after what you have been just hearing from Allah's kalam. But it's the love and feeling that you have for me that you want to hear me talk as a brother Muslim so I'm forced to say some words. It was towards his last days on earth. Our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was in Medina. The whole of Arabia was at his feet. The whole of Arabia had accepted Islam. The only thing that was left to be done was now polishing up the Muslims making them better Muslims. That he could sit back and relax. The job is done. Not so. This, this is what he must have felt. Well-deserved rest. Leave it to the Sahabas to carry on, polishing up the people, make them better Muslims. Not so. Allah Ta'ala, he sends Akhi Jibreel, with this ayah I read to you just now, telling him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَّةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَزِيرًا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ That we have not sent you a Muhammad, except as a giver of glad tidings, بَشِيرًا وَنَزِيرًا and as a warner, but the bulk of mankind, they still do not know. There's no time for rest. As the Urdu poet says, وقت فرصت ہے کہاں کام ابھی باقی ہے نور توحید کا اتمام ابھی باقی ہے. There's no time for rest and relaxation. There's work to be done. So what does he do? He calls the scribes, people who could read and write, because our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa was an ummi, an unlettered prophet. So he calls the scribes and he dictates to them five letters. One to the emperor of Persia, to the emperor at Constantinople, the king of Egypt, the king of Yemen, and the Negus of Abyssinia. Five letters on parchment, skins of animals, they were written down, short letters. 
five sahabas, invaluable lives, five steed horses, the Mercedes Benzes and the BMW of the time. That's what it was. And he sends them out in different directions, 1,500 miles this way, 1,000 miles the other way, across the Red Sea, a few hundred miles behind him. This is what he did. Immediately he set in motion that the message, the message that Allah had given him was not only for the Arabs. It was to be given to the rest of mankind. He said, aksara nasi la But the bulk of mankind still hasn't received the message. This is what he did. What he could afford. He can ill afford the lives of five sahabas, five horses with little parchments. I am asking our brethren that if he had our petrodollars and if he had the printing presses that we have at our disposal, pressing of the button and thousands and tens of thousands of Qur'ans can be churned out, would he not have flooded the world with the Qur'an, I ask you? If he can send out letters just with two verses of the Qur'an, one of these letters is collecting dust in the top copy museum in Istanbul. Our Turkish brethren outwardly have looked after that parchment very well. I've seen it. It's protected. But the message is collecting dust. Because that letter to Heraclius, the Emperor at Constantinople, begins with the first ayah, the first verse of the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. And it continues. Generally, we can't read that letter because it is more like scratches, shorthand. The writings of 1400 years ago. We are used to nice, bold handwriting. So they have produced for us in beautiful script, side by side, a transcript in Arabic of that letter. So if you read this, you can decipher that. And I read it with Bismillah. Then it says from Muhammad Rasulullah to Heraclius, the Emperor at Constantinople, accept Islam and be benefited. Then another ayah from the Holy Quran, Qul ya halal kitab, ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum, Allah na'buda illa Allah, wa la nushrika bihi shay'an, wa la yattakhiza ba'duna ba'dan arbaaban min duni Allah, fa in tawallaw, fa kulu shadu biyanna muslimoon, and he ends with his own words and his seal. That message is collecting dust in Istanbul. That message. What is the message? The message says, Qul, Allah tells him, and he is telling them, and through, through him, he's telling us all, every Muslim is being told. Qul, tell them. Ya halal kitab, O people of the book, O Jews and Christians, ta'ala, come. That we come to common terms as between us and you. Let us get onto a common platform. And the terms and conditions of getting together, Allah says, Allah, that we worship none but Allah. This is what you want to talk about. You want to have a dialogue? What dialogue? Our brethren have been having dialogues with the Christians. One Christian missionary said it is hogwash. This dialogue taking place between Muslims and Christians is hogwash. You know what's hogwash? When you wash the pig and the leftover water, that's what it is. And wallah, that's what a Christian missionary says that. 